Brand new from Zygu, Shagu, Zoro. <laughs> Zoro, as I called it in the previous video. Zoro has made this new G-Sock, which is an external controller for both the G90 and the 5105 QRP rigs that are made by Shagu, Zoro. <laughs> And uh, we're going to take a really quick look at it today, and I'm going to give you some insight on what I think after watching several uh, other videos from other YouTubers and doing some reading on a couple of forums and seeing firsthand how it works myself. So let's take a look at this today. Shut up and sit down. Thanks for joining the channel today. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. On this video series, which is titled Ham Radio 2.0, we do reviews, news, and how-tos of many things that are new in amateur radio. So if that's something that interests you, consider hitting that thumbs up button and clicking subscribe below. Haven't done that in a while. So, okay. Uh, so the Shagu Zygu Zoro thingamajig, the G-Sock, has been... You know, this was announced a while ago. It was announced, I don't even remember when it was. I think it was, I think it was, I could look it up right now. I didn't look it up yet. I'm like, well, okay. It was announced several months ago. I'm pretty sure it was 2019. Uh, but however long it was, between now and today, this is November of 2020, between whenever it was kind of dangled, oh, GSOC, and they showed us this mock-up of it. They didn't even really tell us what it was. But between now and then, they had plenty of time to get this thing right and working and updated. And quite frankly, I don't think it's ready yet. Um, I think it was still, I think it still needs some work. And it does not do everything that it claims it will do. For instance, Wi-Fi. It's supposed to have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and don't know where those are because I can't find them in the menu. And there's nothing, this this manual that comes with it. Is this uh, this thing here? I've got some notes written on the front of it there, but uh, this manual that comes with it, you know, you can see that this page here is right side up, and this page here is upside down. The reason they did that is because when you open the first page, it says connection method for G90. If you go the other direction, it says connection method for 5105. Okay, so I don't know if they did that on purpose or not. Some of the pages are upside down, and some of them are right side up. But if you if you look in the manual. The 5105 5105 pages are all the same, and the uh, G90 pages are all the same. So let's switch over here to this view. If you notice right here, this says G90 online. That means I have the G90 connected right now. So what you have to do, so, okay, so I don't like this part. What you have to do is you have to remove the screen from the G90. It's got two Allen heads here, and uh, let's switch that. It's got two Allen heads here on this side and two Allen heads on this side. And on the back of the screen is simply a DB9 connector. That's all it is. So the DB9 connector, or I'm sorry, the back of the face, It's well, it, it is the screen. This is a DB9 connector that just onto the G90, and you screw it down with two screws on each side that are Allen head screws. Um, you, don't, you, you, you take this off and you set it aside for use with the G-Sock. So... Two things about that. Number one, I was under the impression the G-Sock was going to be like a maestro, like a flex radio maestro, and was going to connect wirelessly to the Zygu radios. Not true. Not true. It requires these connections in the back, which is this uh, this DB9, which this, this DB9 cable right here goes from here to the connection on the... the G90 radio where this would normally go. So you take this off, the DB9 connector is exposed on the front of the G90, you take this cable that comes with the G-Sock and you run it from the G-Sock to the G90. So the G-Sock replaces the screen on the G90. Kind of convoluted, makes it corded. So you've got, um, you know, you've got, let me power that down. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to unplug that. I'm going to look on, at the back here. This um, this stand here is kind of cheesy. It's it's okay, I guess, but it's it's. I mean, it works, but it's just not. It's not. It's not at a very good angle. It should be about yay much higher, in my opinion. Okay, so uh, you know what? I'm going to make that a bit lighter. 
because that G90 is, or the back of the G-SOC is kind of weird. Okay, so this is your speaker, and this is the stand. This is, uh, this is for stereo phone headset right there. That's your IQ connector, which is just a 3.5 millimeter plug, which goes from the back of the G-SOC directly to the back of the IQ port on the, G on the G90. Uh, this will work on the, the 5105 also. And then this is your DB9 connector. So the G-SOC comes with these two cables right here, and it comes with um, this stand already installed. On the side here, we've got an Ethernet port, and we've got a DCN. This is where you plug in the DCN. Something I'll show you about the DC power in a second. The Ethernet port is simply for a microphone. It will not connect the GSOC to the internet. So the GSOC is supposed to have Wi-Fi, and, and I can't find it. And the, the um, Ethernet port is just for a microphone. Uh, there's two USB drives that you or uh, USB drives, USB connections that you can use to connect a, me, a keyboard and mouse and do some cool things on the thing. Uh, but if you if you connect the, um, but I can't find anything else that the, that the that the USB actually does right now. Firmware updates might be possible and something that they're going to expand on later on. One thing I I did definitely want to show because I could not find this anywhere, and I had to. Um, I had to kind of guess, but I also asked um, a couple other people about it, too. Um, this power cable that comes with the G-Sock is tangled up right now. <laughs> All right, so one end of it is, is a modular, is a round modular connector. I can probably, actually, pr probably better to show you there. Okay, one end of it's a round modular connector like that. The other end is bare wires. Now, this bare wire right here, this is a bare wire, and this is a bare wire at the end with a, with a white insulation around it. Now, logically speaking, you should understand that the white connect, the, the side of the wire with the white sheathing is the positive side. But I was scared to death to hook this up wrong, okay, because there's no fuse in this cable, okay? There is, this is a, what I assume is a ferrite bead. This is a ferrite. This looks like a ferrite. Doesn't it's you can't take it apart. Not very easily anyway. This is this is a ferrite choke or bead, and there's no fuse in this cable. So I was scared to death to hook this thing up backwards and fry my G sock, which again I paid for. Um, did I say that up front? I don't remember if I did or not. So Radiodity has sent me free radios to review in the past, and when this was announced, I asked them. If I could get one, they said, yeah, sure, sure. Let us let us get closer to the to the release date. We don't know what the price is going to be. When they figure out what the price is, they told me that they could give me a discount, but they couldn't send me one for free. And I'm like, that's okay. That's okay. They don't owe me anything. They don't owe me anything at all. They've sent me free radios in the past to review. I've always done a fair review on them and 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 tell you what I think. Um, this is going to be a fair review on the G SOC as well. So this is definitely the white sheathing part of the cable is definitely the positive part of the cable and the one you want to pay attention to okay so that's just that's i couldn't it's it's not in the manual it's not on their website and the videos i've watched from other youtubers nobody ever says it so i wasn't real sure and the last thing i wanted to do was fry this dadgum thing so just for clarification that is actually how you hook it up all right now when i hit that just now you can see it boot up. It showed me it uh, it powered on the uh, the the radio also the G ninety. So so when I hit the the power button on the G sock, it powered on both the G ninety and the G sock. So Zoro interfacing is working, as it seems. All right, so there we go. Now this is the uh, obviously I'm gonna get my head out of the way here. This is the interface here. You've got, it is a touch screen. So you've got that little mouse right there. And you can't, and, I, and like I said, you can hook a mouse up to um, the, one of the side USB ports and you can mouse around and click on stuff. But it's touch screen also. So you can go like that and I can change bands. This is reminiscent of like a, either a, um, 7300 or flex radio or something like that one of the things that the i don't know why that's grayed out right now i'd have to read on that so we hit this right here we can change bands 
five meters or five megahertz rather. That's fun. 14 megahertz. It's done in megahertz, not meters. So hit this button right here and it goes away. If you've got two VFOs, VFO B and VFO A, like that, you can change modes. All that there. It adds um, narrow FM to the, the G90 doesn't have FM by default. So it'll add that to the G90. And you can see it says G90 online right there. If I unplug the G90 real quick, there we go. There we go. Now you see the, the screen all kind of coming together like that. And it's lost the waterfall and it says offline right there. And then I'll go ahead and plug the G90 back in. And there you see the effect of the waterfall and it came right back all by itself. I didn't do anything except power on the G90. So it's got these, these user defined keys over here. It will allow you to go into the menus and program that. See, one thing that I couldn't see, radio, scope. Okay, so we're on scope. We can change that. We've got two menus here, radio and scope. The first one is scope. You can change the span on the waterfall. There you go. And I can just touch it too. I'm on a dummy load right now, and as Josh at the Ham Radio Crash Course um, displayed on his, it's got some kind of interference. And when you turn this knob and you change frequencies, let's go there and there. Oh, it's locked. That's why. I forgot how I locked it. There we go. Okay. Yeah. You, you press that to lock. You press the short press that to lock. So as you change frequencies, the waterfall and the band scope do not change. This doesn't move. It doesn't, I mean, you, you say, and again, we're on a dummy load. So you would think that this, you know, these highlights in the waterfall would do at least something. And it doesn't. It doesn't do anything. I'm actually in the middle of a shack redesign and I'm building a new off-center fed dipole antenna right now. So I don't actually have an antenna to connect this to at this moment. Hopefully get hopefully I'll finish that this weekend. Somebody asked in my one of my live streams uh, a week or two ago about when my next shack video would be done. And that's what I'm working. That's why the antenna is not up right now. So I don't even have my flex radio connected right now. But um, uh, so that's so I can't really hook it up to an antenna at the shack right now. But it doesn't matter because this is on a dummy load and, and you can see all this this info here. And when you turn this, nothing happens, even on the span. So the span you can change the level. That doesn't seem to do anything. I'm not seeing anything change on that there. Display, I can change RGB. You know, I can change my waterfall colors like that. I can change s several things on the display. I don't want to do that right now. I'll just leave that. We'll go over here to radio and modem. I haven't read to see what this is about yet. Um, oh, it's got PSK built into it. So this is probably the PSK modem. And this is the part where you can actually connect a keyboard and you can type a message. TX MSG is what that says. You can't see that in the in the screen right now. But you got a send button here and it'll do PSK by default. Now, how you get back to it. I don't know. Info A, CW, lower and upper, AM, and narrow FM. Okay. So it doesn't actually have a digital mode. Okay. 
It's not very intuitive. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, there we go. Okay, so there's an X at the top right corner. I didn't see that. It's pretty small, but it's right there. So you X out of that window. That's the modem window. The T slash R EQ, you can change the EQ, the equalizer. It does have an equalizer where you can change the tones on your receive signal. That's kind of fun. DSP is digital, digital signal processor where you can noise reduction, noise blanker, uh, uh, compression. I think that's narrow filter. NF one of three. Or not, that might be notch. Oh, you know what? That's notch filter. That's what that is. That's a notch filter. And I was watching someone else's video. I can't remember who it was right now that d said that the notch filter didn't seem to work. So I can't really try it because I'm not on a antenna right now, like I said. Compressor or compression, rather. And, or compensator. I'm sorry, that's probably compensator, not compre uh, not um, compressor. That's probably compensator. And then Vox is a voice activation. And, and, oh, that one's actually got an exit button on it. What do you know? And then system. And we can change the backlight, CW, CW keyer, mic gain, line in, line out, IF input. And there, uh, let's see, next. Next, CW three or four tone volume, QSK time, QSK on. Should be should have some sort of calibration screen calibration because sometimes you gotta touch it a little bit, a little bit more. So that's that's basically all the menus that I can see. Let's let's do this function. Okay, so that's a writ. You can go up and down and signal. Exit that. Pressing that changes your bandwidth here. Pressing this, earphone selected, speaker selected, volume, squelch is the outer knob here. You change the, the filter there with the inner knob here. Outer knob there is change the bandwidth of that filter. ATU. So you've got all these things you can lock. Like if Vox is on, then it'll be there. And squelch, SQL. If the screen is locked, there. So I lock the screen, it lights that up in white. Unlock the screen, turn the ATU on goes there and you've got all these other options you can get here this you can't press this this is not clickable or anything like that so as now this is something that uh, this is something I was kind of disappointed in okay because as Josh said on his video it's supposed to have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth where is it there's no menus for it. There's no way to get into it. And my understanding when this was released is that it was supposed to be like a maestro to connect to the to the G90 and the 5105. Well, the problem with this thing is that it's it's it requires a hard line. I want I want to be able to I want to be able to hook up my G90 on a POTA activation to my antenna over here over there, wherever, if you can see that way. <laughs> and I want to be able to take my G-Sock and go sit in the shade and operate the radio, you know, from five or 10 feet away, the way I can with a Flex Radio Maestro. That's what I thought this was. And it's not. It's just a basically a bigger screen that adds some options to the existing QRP Zorro radios. Okay, the newer, the two newer versions anyway. So... With that in mind, at 550, I don't know, man. I um, uh, I don't know. Uh, I I think it's probably, I think it's probably not there yet. Like I said in the very in the very um, in the very beginning, I said I I just don't think it's there yet. The USB, the two USB ports on the side should have a cat control. 
They should have a, 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 a computer interface. If you plug the, the GSOC into a computer, it should like see it as, as, as some sort of device. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything with the computer right now. So there's no cat. There's no way to go in to say uh, M1MM and cat control your rig. There's no rig control. Not that I could get to work anyway. Uh, there's no internal sound card. If it's got if it's got built in PSK, why does it not have an internal sound card? Okay, it's got it's got now GSOC. If you watch their video, it does it. There's a really short video on on Radioddy. And it says, you know, future expansion. It's ex it's expandable, uh, and presumably you could take this thing and take it apart. They show the back of a, they show the back of a uh, what looks like a motherboard or some kind of circuit board, um, in their video. That's when they say it's expandable. So presumably you can add to the contents of this case. Okay, that's kind of cool. I I like that. I like the fact that they can, you know. Like an Elecraft, you can take it apart and you can add an ATU. You can add a, a charge controller for internal batteries and add rechargeable batteries and that kind of stuff. Um, great, great. So if they if that's something they're going to add later on, then fine. Okay, good. But that's going to be a hardware update. Presumably, for they're not going to send you that for free. You're going to have to pay for that. <laughs> so, uh, so I'd like to see a sound card. I'd like to see some sort of rig control, especially with two USB ports on the side of it. Why would it not have, why would I need to plug a keyboard and mouse into my GSOC just to do PSK if I still have to have a keyboard over here to log my contacts into M1MM? I mean, you know, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, weird. And, you know, you can interface this with the CE19 device, which will interface into your computer, and you can do WSJTX, FT8, FT4, and this kind of stuff with the G90 without even without taking the GSOC out of the mix completely you can do that with the G90 and the 5105 right now so if i if i've already got all that set up and i want to add the GSOC to the mix i don't I, it, it's not going to give me anything i mean it's going to give me a bigger display and a waterfall that doesn't seem to do anything and a tuning knob that doesn't seem to change the band scope when i turn the knob now that part can probably be fixed in firmware a couple of the other guys who've reviewed this have said the same thing. It's probably a firmware update. Okay, that's cool. Um, I don't know. If this thing was 150 bucks, I'd say go grab one. This is really cool. You can add a big screen to it. You can add some different controls to it. Uh, you know, it's expandable. Awesome for 550. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't like. I said. I don't think it's there yet. I don't regret buying it. I want to see how to update firmware on it and uh, how what kind of changes will be made to it and what kind of features will be added to it. But it's not there yet. So that's my opinion. Um, not to sound uh, discouraging or anything, but with the price point we're looking at, and with um, the fact that this is not a radio by itself, it's simply a screen to add to an existing radio, the G90 or the, the X5105 from Zorro. And uh, uh, like, like the Flex Maestro is not a radio by itself. It's just a, it's just a external digital display for control for rig control. And, and it offers a lot and it offers, many more items than than this now it's about twice the price of this but it's the quality is like 10 times what this is uh as far as a flex maestro goes and this is a this is quite a large unit also let me see if i can move the microphone here um it's deceivingly large here's the screen of the g90 now when i did my video a while back about comparing the um when I did my video a while back about comparing the the weights on the uh, seventy uh, the IC seven hundred five and the fifty one hundred five and the G ninety and the KX three, I mentioned that the G ninety had the smallest screen out of all of those, which of course is true. So this eliminates that problem. But then you're adding a five hundred and fifty dollar item to an existing four hundred and twenty five to four hundred and fifty dollar twenty watt radio, and now you're at like about a thousand dollars for a robust not quite as robust as what they originally said 20 watt rig 
when you could just get a full powered, you can get an IC7100 for like $300 less than that. And you can get an IC, uh, FT891 for two or $300 less than that. So I don't know. I, it, the price point right now with the, with the lack of features in this, it's, it's to me, it's not there yet. But again, I'm looking forward to seeing what they come out with. They've certainly had plenty of time to make this good, and I don't know why they dangled in, dangled it in front of our faces for so long and released it with this lack of features and lack of working waterfall and band scope on it. But So there we go. More to come. Uh, I will email Radiodity and say, hey, where's the firmware update? And how do you do it? And then we'll probably do a, a video about uh, how to update firmware on this and what different features we might add to it. And I'd like to see what it looks like on the front of a X5105 also, which I have, but my firm, my, my firmware on my X5105 is way outdated. So um, probably need to do that first. Anyway, 73, let me know if you've got this. Let me know what you think about it. Put your comments below. Um, are you going to get one? Does this discourage you? Does have, do, have you already got one? And have you found something that I didn't mention today? good or bad. Put your comments below. Let me know what you think. See you next time. Thanks for watching.